Looking to learn a new skill and get in shape at the same time? Look no further than our six-week beginner boxing course. You'll build your strength and endurance, improve your coordination and reflexes, and gain confidence in your ability to defend yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the time has come for the main event of the evening. One time for the undisputed champions of the community, it's go time! All right, everybody, in the corner with the champ. I got Serene Thin Elf right here. Um, we are about to get it going. So in, in, in this corner with the champ, what we do is we do a little boxing. Uh, and you get a choice of hitting a heavy bag, or you get hit the concentration mix. What do you want to do? I want to do the mix. You want to do the mix. She wants, to, she wants to miss and then punch me in the face. I know that's what's going on. Hey, Serene Thin Elf, y'all, we out here. Let's go. Two. Those punches. It felt good. Like that. Yeah. So it taps into your inner like it this. does. I've never done it before. I was like, hmm. Yeah. So that brings me to my first question. What's your street fight record then? <laughs> like zero? Undefeated. She's undefeated. <laughs> She's never been beat. Never. Uh, me and Zeus had an argument about that. I was, he was like, no, I don't think that counts. Man, and he swore at me in Spanish. I won't say it. But it was bad. <laughs> That's what Serene. Yes. How accurate is your name when it comes to your personality? It's, you know, what's really crazy is a lot of people, once they learn my name, I frequently hear, you're exactly like your name. And I'm like, I don't think I'm going inside right, all the time. Right, right. But I do. I do recognize as I get older that I think it is pretty accurate. My, my name actually comes from, my dad got sober when I was born. And so Serenity, the Serenity Prayer. Nice. So he named, named me Serene. Sweet. I know her, she's lying, but that's cool. Like she's, like <laughs> it, she's sounds, it was dope it Sounds good. That sound, I felt that. Yeah. That was not true, but it was real. We're in the gym setting, right? Mm -hmm. What would be, you've been in the gym, you've been in the gym, you like to work out in shape and stuff like that, right? Sure. Yeah. What is unacceptable male gym attire and then female? Anything too tight. Like anything, anything too tight and showy. Yeah. So, my, I got so leggings. So like what you're wearing as an example. Of unacceptable? Uh-huh. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't know, this is a 2X. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to do with stuff. Okay, so leggings out of the picture for men. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unacceptable for, for the ladies. That's what's unacceptable gym. I would say, I mean, I don't know. Like, I struggle with that question a little bit because, like, what is unacceptable, right? To you. I think, if I'm being real, yeah. I don't really care, cool. like, what people wear. Okay. I don't. So if your ass is out, we cool. If you got your ass, <laughs> Out. Well, I mean, I gotta have clothes on. Oh, but you said anything. You said acceptable attire. Right. Anyways, I don't judge. I don't care. People can wear whatever feels good to them. But yeah, clothes are preferred Just at the gym. Preferred. Okay, so mm -hmm. gym. I follow the gym rules, people. Follow the gym rules. Okay. Most important question. Okay. Okay. We had a certain uh, school board member who made history who will be nameless. Mm -hmm. Okay? We won't. Oh, my earring fell. Look, she done knocked the earring out. That was me. Hold on. We're going to leave it just like that. That's what happened. No, we, this, we're keeping that. Just... We're keeping that. <laughs> Look, that's how nervous she got in the question. So there was a certain <laughs> school member. Yeah, just get that side. <laughs> that's right. Hey, do this. Come here. Yeah, Keep moving. Nobody knows. Nobody no, knows. Just okay. 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 Who wins in a fight? Two rounds, one minute rounds, you versus this nameless person who possibly just won school board 
and was a guest who's winning, who you got, and why? It would be a tie. I would win round one. Yeah. And then because I'm I'm older than her, so oh. I like went before her and Boom. something. I but like she's it. like next gen, so she would kick my ass in round two. And, and I would draw. support her. Well, not yeah. to kick my ass, but yeah. <laughs> metaphorically speaking. Yeah, yes. I like it. Mm -hmm. That was very politically correct. No, it's how I feel. She said she would knock your head off <laughs> into See, the third row. That's, that's, what she said. that's why she's gonna kick my ass in round two. Only kidding. Thank you so much. I appreciate the time. This was fun. Now let's get back. Let's get into the ring. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. All right, let's jump in there. Get some heavy hitting questions. Okay. And you don't hit me. Okay, let's go then. Let's go. Why'd you do that? That makes me nervous. <laughs> Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome mm. back to In This Corner with the Champ. I'm your host. Manny Gutierrez, AKA The Champ. Today I have a special guest. Uh, she's, she's a champion for sure in the community. Um, I want you guys to show your love and give it up for the Chief Behavior Officer, Serene The Dream Thin Elk. Not Elf. Not Elf, not, not Thin Elf. elf. elk. I, I would have liked if we could can we edit that Zeus into Elf? Let's, let's put that. Fact check if it's really Thin Elk. Right, right. So, what's up, girl? Just hanging out. I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. I'm so pumped yeah. to have you. Like, like seriously, we've, we've talked about everything from the beginning of the belt. Yes. Like, the thought of it. And, and then now, look. Now we're here. And I'm, I know. And I'm That's what's so you. cool about it is just the evolution of conversations that we had both loving WWF growing up. Yeah. And then one day I see you actually got a belt and then just everything that's evolved. So, yes. <laughs> that's the funnest part is, is, is having a belt and then people ask me why. And I'm like, mm -hmm. why not? Why, why don't you have a belt? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, and you used the Ultimate Warrior, right? Yes, Ultimate she, Warrior. She was, the, she was the Ultimate Warrior, just so y'all yeah. so know. She used to go around the house and shake the furniture. Yeah, I, yeah, I, and now at looking back, I'm like, God, that was the worst cultural appropriation <laughs> to ever yes. exist. Yeah, who stole that entire thing? Like, what is going it's like on? like this white man, but anyway. Yeah. But at the time, I liked his energy, right? right. And so I, m my dad would take uh, me and my brother to WWF. Let's go. And so when we went there, we'd get shirts and then I got the belt. And so in third grade for show and tell, like every week I'd come and be like, this is my belt. Right. This is my belt. This and they're like, we know. <laughs> we know that's you. Again, the belt. <laughs> but, Who's taking bets? Tomorrow, Serene's bringing the belt. Right, to show right. Time. And so I grew up with lots of brothers. And so that was what my world was like, being around basketball and WWF and stuff like that. So, so you're nice in hoops? What's that? You go hoop? You go hoop? I, I used to. I don't know anymore. I haven't tried. That's a setup. I know a setup when I see a setup. That's a setup. It's like, I don't know. You want to bet? On some money? I don't like, know. I'm not that good. Yeah. So tell me, tell me a little bit. How'd you end up in your role here at, at, at South Dakota Urban Indian Health? Tell me about that journey a little bit. Yeah. So um, I'm an addictions and mental health therapist, and I've worked in lots of different agencies, actually all over the country. Um, and then the opening for this position came up. I was always a therapist. I was never a director or supervisor. And so I was like, I kind of want to level up my game. I want to earn new, or build new skills. And it was scary stepping into it. And I would say over the past almost three years, not quite three years, I have learned a lot the hard way, um, but also I'm glad I did it. Mm. Cause I think fear could have stopped me. Cause I was thinking of all the things that could have happened. And indeed some of those things did happen and actually in really hard ways that I didn't anticipate, but truly I have grown like professionally and personally because of those things. That's awesome. Yeah. Tell me a little bit, what, what, was, what was the challenges, some of the things that were hard to adapt to from transitioning from just, you know, therapist to mm -hmm. now nah, you, you're the head of the whole, the whole thing, man. Yeah, uh, there's so many layers to it, but one of them is when you work with your friends or former mm -hmm. colleagues, the way relationships are both very strong but yet fragile at the same time. Sure. I feel like you can have a very strong relationship with someone and then something misunderstanding or miscommunication can happen. And if one person is really struggling in their life or not in a great place, 
their thoughts can brew and right and so there can be a rift and i i feel like i didn't really anticipate that Mm -hmm. because i have such a strong belief in repairing relationships or when i do something that i feel was wrong taking accountability and working through it but there are some things that are just out of your control and i would say that's one of the things i've learned the most is that you do your part you you clean your side of the street up of what Mm -hmm. you feel you did you don't take on extra stuff that people may be projecting onto you and the only way i feel like to really know if you're taking on too much stuff is really good mentors and people who are objective and not just gonna hate on everyone else for you. Like, mm-hmm. oh, they did this, they're not good. It's sometimes you need that, but really when in your professional realm, you need people who help help you check yourself. For sure. But then also say, you know, I think you're taking on too much there. That's not yours. Mm-hmm. Right. So this is you can go this far and do this much, and then you have to let it go. Yeah. So I think realizing that you can't always control people's responses, even when you have the best intention. Yeah. So, so come here, you're, you're a very proud Native American woman. You always have your know, representation, like the earrings today. I made those. He did. Don't fact check. That. He didn't make them. No, I did it. Yeah. I, I didn't make them. I tried. It was horrible. Anyway, <laughs> um, <clears throat> tell me about, like, you know, your traditions. Like, what is your favorite tradition, maybe to celebrate? What, what, mm-hmm. what is the one thing that, you know, if you could teach somebody who doesn't know about mm-hmm. the American tradition, this would be the one you would go to. Yeah. So I'm thinking about all the things from ceremony to, you know, family gatherings to celebrations. I think, so there's ceremony, then there's like the Wachipi, which is more of a celebration. I think a lot of people don't know that differentiation. Mm. Um, it is a sacred thing, right? Like there's a lot of teachings within that circle of the, well, known as the powwow, but mm. we, for us, it's the Wachipi. Yeah. Um, so there's different ways to experience life. And I think in the healing realm, it's more ceremony and to ground ourselves and call our spirits back. And the celebrations, it's to, yeah, to celebrate life, which is through all the things that our people have been through. We need both mm-hmm. of those things. But I would say the one thing I love about our life ways is that no matter what is going on, family is everything. Mm. I mean, it is everything because if we don't feel connected to people and again family can be your own blood family or it can Mm -hmm. be people that you love like family for sure but connection is healing and so that's the thing i love about our our people is that we're um there is lateral violence and all that but very generally speaking really loving really loving and really open-minded and non-judgmental and belief and humor as healing so those are the things i love that's awesome um, you talked about how, how important family was. Um, and when I was doing Red Road and they, they talked about all my relations and I love, um, you know, they said we're all connected. And I love that at South Dakota Urban Indian Health, you don't call them clients. No. What, what do you call them? We call them relatives. Yeah. yeah. T- touch that, touch on that a little bit. Why that's important and how it ties into the family. Then. Sure. Yeah, I think that so at Urban Indian Health, uh, you know, we have our medical department, we have our cultural health department, mm-hmm. behavioral health. And so our clinic is integrative care. So it's all about how do we look at the whole person? And a part of that is not looking at people as we are the ones that have the answer. Sure, we have tools, we have skills, medical knowledge, mental health knowledge. So those are things that we take pride in as professionals, but in terms of how we relate to each other, we don't want that power dynamic to overtake things where um, you need help, come here so we can save you, which our people have already experienced so much where it's like, you know, through through all, all the years of government policies to say like, we know what's best for you. Right. Um, we're very much, let's build a relationship Mm-hmm. and figure out how we can help you know help you what do you need maybe it's case management maybe it's going into an EP to ceremony so we call everyone that we work with each other and the people that come through our doors non-native and native right. our relatives because that's how we have to see one another is um i think i've had experiences my sister is has uh an illness and she very often was not treated well Right. And so I think about all of her hospital stays and I would want those nurses and doctors and to treat my sister like that was like their daughter sure. or, you know, their sibling. So. And what a way um, 
to project that connectivity. Um, I think that's something we all can learn from mm -hmm. and we all should be able to, uh, you know, take hold to because I think that is important. Um, so in, in that realm, what, what are the biggest challenges you're facing right now? Um, you, I know you're in a transition period here. So what are some of the biggest challenges? Yeah, so I am major transition. I feel like the past year has been everything is like, whoop, you're going to change almost everything in your life. So I'm going to continue working for Urban Indian Health, but I'm going to be living in Minnesota mm -hmm. um, and working remotely in community programs director. Right. So our cultural health department is just growing and thriving. So we need a little more structure there for all the relatives that come through our doors and support. So I'll be overseeing that. And I think the biggest challenge is always just monitoring your own stress levels mm -hmm. um, when you make a huge decision in your life yeah. we all have to make big decisions whether it's about our relationships whether it's about our jobs we're always questioning ourselves which can be healthy yeah. but i think that when we have done so much work to get to a place where we take the leap just take the leap yeah. you know yeah. and that's that's what where i'm at right now is i took the leap and i'm just dealing with all everything that comes with it yeah. So, so in that in that space, transitioning and, and growing is this. Is, you're doing a lot of growing, mm -hmm. and super proud of you. Thank I'm you. Super proud of you, and you guys should be proud of her too, because she's. If you're not, I'm gonna punch you in the face. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just I'm not violent. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> so so what what how do you keep yourself learning? How and, and what's keeping you awake at night? What's mm. what's the thing that's like, mm, mm -hmm. I got I gotta get this done or whatever it is. What tell me about that. Yeah. So I think I'll start with the what keeps me up at night. I think it actually used to a lot of things used to keep me up at night a mm. lot. And I feel like lately I have done really well with trying to just shift into a different space, right. you know. Um, meditating, listening to calming music, just to come back to myself because I recognized I'm forty one. Mm. I just turned 41 Get and so it. yeah 41 and so for me I'm like at this point in my life do I need to continue just surviving and being worried and anxious and like those things are going to be a part of who I am because it's just my nature I think to worry and because I care so much but I'm like I don't want to live my whole life that way where I'm just really worried and concerned and overthinking and so i'm really working to not be up at night but right. i think the things that do come to me are, are really two things it's it's the health of my children mm -hmm. my family i worry about my parents because mm -hmm. they're getting older and our family has been through a powerful difficult but healing journey mm -hmm. and to see them older mm -hmm. is is really good you know yeah so that keeps me up and then obviously my children but other than that I feel pretty good. Good. Yeah. So as a champion, right? Um, oftentimes people they focus on the belt, they focus on the accolades of a champion, right? Mm -hmm. Um, what they don't see is the behind the scenes, what they don't see is the journey, what they don't see is the hard work and mm -hmm. and the failures yeah. that, that we go through as people to get us to this point. Um, so what what was one of the biggest maybe failures or, or, or mm -hmm. uh, losses, defeats you faced? you know, in your career, my career or life, whatever works. Yeah. Whatever no. Yeah. So I, I think mm. I will say the hardest thing when you go into the helping field, what you want to do is you want to help people. Right. right. Um, so through my career, I have lost a couple people um, mm. that I, I worked with as clients, right. you know, one to suicide and one to substance use. Mm. And when you connect with people and you follow their journey and you know, they're pain mm. and to know that um, it ended that way is incredibly hard mm. and I would almost like veer on the side of traumatizing no for sure because of how much you open your heart to their their path and um, also you know thinking did, what did I what could I have done differently right and replaying all that um, but through the years having to really again look at things that are outside of your control as a, a human being and a helper and it's you have to look at your part question yourself but don't beat yourself up over it yeah. you know so how do you do that because that's that's really tough and, and for young professionals out there that are doing the work and and making these connections you know when you're 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 sharing intimate details yes. right these people are giving you pieces of their life their spirit yes right? yes and and then you you're doing your best you're giving all your energy 
to, to try to help. Mm -hmm. And and then something like that happens. How? Like, what are some things you used? What are some things you did to get through those mm -hmm. times? Well, I'll just start with the the foundation of a lot of people who end up going into the helping field. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, have a lot of wounds themselves because they they tend to feel a lot of more compassion. I think mm -hmm. because of what they've been through. And so, um, there's this whole concept of the wounded healer. Of we come into this space because we also have strengths but wounds and so you're sometimes if we externalize and try to fix or help everyone else it's almost an escape from doing our own work right so the first thing i would say to anyone entering to a helping field is really monitor that you know you have to go to your own therapy do your own um, self-care because you can get really wrapped up in the external world and then your identity as a helper and your self-worth becomes mm -hmm. if people are doing well I'm well, right? Where we can lose ourselves in that. Um, so, and it can lead to burnout. So I think really just monitoring self-care, taking yeah. care of yourself is so important. I think that's, it's, it's important that you even mention a lot of times people that get in the helping profession, they are wounded, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I got a quote from Tom actually from, what's up Tom? You good B? I need you on the show. No, <laughs> um, he said, you know, you know, we always hear hurt people hurt people. That's, you always hear that but healing people heal people, right? And I, mm -hmm. I love that quote because it's not healed people, mm -hmm. healing mm -hmm. people, right? So we're on our journey, we're healing, and it seems like in that space, when you start to get that, to that next step, you want to share it. Yeah, right? and, and so I think that was, that was really, really mm -hmm. awesome that you use those, those kinds of words and languages. Um, so, I already know it, but I want you to share with people like your favorite quote because I think it's really awesome. Yeah. Um, and so if you could share that yeah. with us. I, oh. I stole your phone. <laughs> you threw my phone did, on the ground? I threw it on the ground. The disrespect. And, yeah, I did. And I was like, you know what? I don't even care. <laughs> hey. do it, do it. Well, I found it. Yeah, go Okay. So the quote is, if you're not in the arena also getting your ass kicked, I'm not interested in your feedback. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. go. And we live in a world, right, where everybody has something to say, right? I know you've gone, through, I've gone through it, right? Um, Zeus, you've gone through it, right? So it, it's, we, we go through all these things, um, like me and Zeus, when we shoot the shorts, right? The yeah. video shorts, I'm, I'm walking around downtown or Sufo, I got a belt and a guy with a camera following me, right? <laughs> And people are like, what the hell? Yeah, right? what is that? And at yeah. first it's, what, what is all that about? And then like when we started releasing, you start hearing, oh, why, why did you get about? Like, what did you do? Mm -hmm. And it's always, and then now it's curiosity, mm -hmm. right? Um, but being in that arena, like, tell me about that. Like when you're, especially when you're around other fighters, mm -hmm. right? Is there a level of respect you see with people? when they've been in the arena with you? Mm -hmm. And then how do you tell somebody who's in the arena to block out that mm -hmm. feedback? How do you do, what are some tips that you can give them on how to you know, block out the feedback from people who have never been in the arena? I think it's knowing just that, that um, you have to find your people who have been through it. That's what I did. Um, I shied away from any type of leadership position, one, because of my own whatever, I didn't right. see myself as a leader, but mm. I kind of kept getting pushed into it. And then I recognized like through, as an indigenous woman, a Lakota and Nakota woman, that leadership looks different for me, the way I experience it. Um, I know a lot of leaders in my family and there were things that I saw because of their own, the historical traumas and their own mm -hmm. stuff that I was like, I don't want to be up there in front of everyone telling people how to do things and what to do. Um, it felt terrifying to me. Right. And so I avoided it. And now I recognize that being a leader for me is just honestly taking care of myself mm -hmm. and being the best relative I can be. And then actually sharing some of the knowledge that, that I, I was given from my teachers. And so I think when lateral violence happened to me and slander and all of those things, it was devastating. There's no other way to say it is it's devastating. Uh, we can armor up and act like we're Teflon, everything's like nothing bothers me. And that might be a stage in your process, 
but it's not sustainable right because you're lying to yourself that mm -hmm. that hurts yeah. when someone attacks you especially when it's someone close to you or even when people don't know you like they've never <laughs> met you right and they got some really weird or mean things to say right and so i think it's just exposure to it and then getting your support from people that have been through it like i've been there you yeah. know so support and also um tuning into how how am i feeling about myself yeah how am I actually feeling? Do I feel good? Am I in alignment with my own values? You know, because then you can stand up a little stronger, I feel like, when you are. I, and, and some of the things we talk about at, at Think 3D um, in, in our Leaders of Tomorrow course and things like, there's, there's no such thing as too much confidence, right? There's arrogance, that's a thing, but too much confidence is, I think confidence is, it's from practice. It's from mm. putting in the work. You gain confidence from doing the reps, yeah. right? Getting mm. through the life, being successful. So if I'm too confident, that says something more about you than it does me, mm. right? Arrogance is I have this false sense of confidence yeah. without putting in the work. I've never done anything, right? Right. Those are two very different things, but I think people want to bleed that in because it uh, offends their insecurities, mm -hmm. right? And if you if you're a, a person who stands out and has been through the shit, and you're like, okay, I'm still here, yeah. right? You're the champ. Mm -hmm. People who are maybe not gone through it, they don't they don't like it. Yeah, right. They don't like it. Right. So right. yeah, so I, I yeah I'm, I'm with you on that. So what what's something about you? We know you you're the chief behavior health health officer. officer. Comes to Yamas and the Yamas to <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So, but what what don't people know? If they, if if somebody who is familiar, yeah, with Serene the Dream, what would they not know that maybe mm -hmm. they should know? I think just some feedback I've gotten from from people is that if. I don't know, they know a little bit about my work or if they heard me speak, mm -hmm. they assume I'm one way, like I'm just this person who's just constantly all about healing. And it's like, yeah, that's that's true. But um, I also, I have, I'm very much, I'm a Gemini and I'm like very much a Gemini where I have this part of me that is very much grounded, but I also like to do, I like to travel, I like to explore, I like, to go out to dinners. I like to like, I love to experience life in these ways that um, some people might say is like, I don't know, fancy or escaping or whatever. And I'm like, I just love to celebrate life. And so I yeah. think I have a duality <laughs> about me very strongly, but yeah, I think, I don't know, maybe that's something that people wouldn't know about me. So, you know, wrapping up here um, as a mom, Mm -hmm. You have two boys? Three boys. Three boys. Three boys and one Three girl. Three boys and a girl. Um, what are the things, three things, mm. that you would leave with them, with your children, to take with them, to lead them through the life, that if you, if you had to give them three beans, right? Mm -hmm. These are the three beans that they can always fall back on. What would it be? The first one... Um... It was a quote I had read many years ago and it related to me and I try to teach this to my kids is um, give your children roots and wings. I feel like the roots are our culture and that's our ceremonial ways. Um, and then the wings are, as a parent, I have no control over your path mm. and honoring what you choose. Am I gonna talk to you about stuff when you go out? Yes, but that that thing of like grounding you in, in your spirit and your culture but also you have your own path and I honor that, mm. you know? So like the roots and wings. Um, the next thing would be the importance of family, that my, my children take care of each other long after I'm gone, that's mm. important. Um, and then the third thing would be just to remember that their ancestors are always with them mm. and teach them signs and ways that they can, they can feel that and walk with that. That is awesome. Well. I am excited that you're here. I'm glad you stopped by. You did me the favor. Um, I'm, I'm excited for the next the next part of your journey. I'll be watching, kind of like a creepo in the back, just just, just like this, watch. just watching over the back. Um, 
But thank you guys. Thank you for, for watching, tuning in. Do the click, link, subscribe, like that thing. Do that thing. Give it up for Serene the Dream Finn Elk. We're still fact checking if it's Elf, but we'll figure that part out. All right, we'll see y'all.